Hey guys, it's Matt, chapter 48. Continuing the middle section of the book is understanding the mechanism. Understanding the mechanism that is basically trying to put everybody under control. And the beautiful thing about all of this is the first step is seeing the fraud, then it's understanding the mechanism and its motivations. But once we get to a point where we truly start winning, then you don't care one bit about the fraud. You don't care one bit about the mechanism. It's like you're on a completely, I think we'll be on a completely different frequency. We'll say thank you for, thank you mechanism for showing me uh, what a, uh, what I need to, needed to do to improve myself. Thank you mechanism, but that you just won't give a shit about it. So it's like, well, why did I study all that for years and years and years? The study was necessary. But then you'll just move past it. I'm, I'm convinced of this. And I'm not there yet myself. We'll move past it. So as the disgusting nature of the mechanism slash society slash the system slash the screen, as its just sickening nature is studied as and, and, and made fun of in the middle section, there's two ways to go. Hopefully through this process you'll see. It's just to kind of rise above it and say, you've got to be kidding me. You know, uh, just just move past it and and work uh, work on yourself. But then there, you know, there is going to be a segment that gets stuck, and oh, we have to uh, join militia groups and we have to sharpen pitchforks and wrap oil soaked rags around torches and go get them. And that is the absolute last thing to do. That's the absolutely what the system wants. It's exactly the the reaction the system begs from us and um it would be let's let's use the existing corrupt infrastructure to go try and punish the existing corrupt criminals so you want to use the corrupt infrastructure that the criminals built to punish themselves yes see it just doesn't it doesn't work it it doesn't work we just you just move past it but just the way you would a mosquito kind of buzzes in your face you just brush it aside you, that you'll just think of these creatures like Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump and everything in this system that tries to get your attention. I think someday we'll just treat it like a mosquito. Okay, chapter 48. For some reason, most people still believe this news infrastructure is put there to benefit them by delivering objective information. That's, we know, is laughable at this point. Sure, the big thunderstorm is coming, and real fires burn real factories, and a local tire plant is closed down, these types of, quote, news stories are, of course, accurate, as reported by your friendly anchor man or anchor woman. An actual 7-Eleven clerk was really shot in the head last night in North Philadelphia, and the assailant, still on the loose, really got away with a case of Pringles. All of these things, as described by the local reporter live on the scene, can be verified by the local community. The audience, then, trusts all all the information coming from the local newspaper, the local television station, website, or radio station. Because we know these things happened, so it all must be true. That's how they work. That's how they slip in their lies. News outlets love to use the word trust, don't they? The most trusted source in the valley, three years in a row, blah, 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 blah. If something keeps needing to tell you to trust it, it's a liar. It's funny that though, to think this through and apply this to other scenarios. What if the Declaration of Independence kept saying the word, trust me, it'll work out, trust, trust us on this Bill of Rights, trust me. What if the Bible kept using the word, trust me, trust me, you want to adopt these commandments. You, you, you wouldn't trust it, would you, if it kept saying, yeah, trust me. But that's what James Earl Jones' voice comes once an hour on CNN and tells you how trusted it is. Give me a break. The real purpose of TV and all news is to lay down your belief set for you. This means they shape your worldview so you can be a productive drone inside the system. The system also creates a condition where people become afraid to question authority at any point and never ever think for themselves. The system smacks down anyone who gets out of line in this regard. It's the main reason for the term conspiracy theorist in the first place. The next time you watch these news clowns on TV, 
Notice how the report about the fake school shooting and the need for gun control is wedged, wedged between the story about the tornado in Oklahoma and it's wedged between the story about the upcoming midterm election for certain congressmen. The news story that's there to shape the viewer like clay, or the totally fake news story, is placed between stories that are verifiably real, like a sandwich. So everything gets swept up in the viewer's mind as real. This is an old carpetbagger's trick. The news said it was going to rain, and then it did. Must be all true. The news said the Eagles won last night. I know they did, because I was at the game. Drunk as hell, but I was at the game. I saw the first half. The news showed me a kid leaving the hospital the day after he was shot 40 times in the chest. He's still wearing his hospital bracelets today giving interviews. Everything the news tells me that I can verify myself is real. So that shooting also must be real. Now, go reference the Psychology for Dummies book. Hey, Matt, there's stories about government corruption in the news every week. Here's a New York Times article about government corruption. That must mean they're looking out for us. No, you asshole, it doesn't. It's just another carpetbagger's trick. Government scandal stories are there to simply convince the viewer that the few guys and gals who are breaking the law, just a few are breaking the law in government, but they'll eventually be brought to justice, and they'll eventually be rooted out and punished. It tells the subconscious of the viewer of the reader, not to worry, good citizen, for the bad apples in government will be found and punished. Look, we got another one in handcuffs just today. This then implies that, at least to your subconscious, it implies the rest of government, those that aren't being prosecuted, is just lawful and looking out for you. In the movie Gangs of New York, The Tammany government official says to the thug Bill, Bill, we need to hang four people. And Bill says, what do you, do you need three or do you need four? I make it four. The next day, four low-level street criminals are rounded up and hanged in the public square to keep up the appearance that the lawful government, the lawful Tammany government, is looking out for the people. He then states another truth to his friend, his thug friend Bill, of the, uh, the the head of the gang, the natives. He says, Bill, the appearance of the law must be upheld, especially when it's being broken. <laughs> exactly. A truth drop in Gangs of New York? Yep. We're going to do a, a video coming up on truth drops in movies. Put the whole collection together. A politician in the news once a month, because of some scandal, covers up the fact that the entire system is a parasitic criminal disease. Back to the news, they'll never question NASA or something that a god like Stephen Hawking came up with. They report these types of findings weekly. NASA released a report today that shows Pluto is actually made of the exact same material as a Twinkie. Have you ever seen the news question any information ever released by a leading expert or question whatever they got from NASA, no matter how out there, two months ago? Here's a picture of, the, of a black hole. We took a picture of a black hole. Report on it. You want us to report on a picture of a black hole? But I thought you said all light and all radio spectrum is sucked up by the black hole, so nothing can ever be seen. No, we were wrong. Here's a picture of it. We took a picture. Report on it. Okay. And they just don't question it. That one question where they say, I thought you said all light is sucked up by the black hole, so it can't be seen. They would never even ask that back. They just, like little lap dogs, take what's put in front of them and read the teleprompter for your viewing pleasure. If the information comes out of certain holier-than-thou sources, it's never challenged. That's pretty easy to understand, though. It's because the news is coming from the system itself. It's a memo directly from the Ministry of Information. Now, like I've said many times, most news anchors are not in on it. They're just dummies that read moving words. They're more about putting new 19-inch rims on the new Range Rover than helping anybody out in the general public. I don't care about helping you or me. The news anchors in San Francisco didn't even notice the pilots' names of a recent plane crash were faked, and they read live on air, involved in the recent crash, is Captain Something Wong, and co-pilots We Too Low, Holy Fook, and Bang Ding Ow. That's when the crash happened. Bang Ding Ow! Yes, news and government and the marriage of it 
is a two-headed dragon whacking itself off. There was actually a news story run in early 2018 where NASA said the planet Uranus smells like farts. Your anus smells like farts, the news, serious news report said. They weren't in any way kidding around and they didn't try to make it a joke. Now, what are you saying, Matt, that the story wasn't even real? Of course that's what I'm saying. It's fake. I don't know why they did it, why they had to run that story. I'm not in the mind of the monsters. I don't know why they had to run a story that said the planet, your anus, smells like farts. But they did. However, I see that the script that they are, t- are turning over, that they're trying to push on all of us daily, is getting more and more pathetic with each passing week. Wait, did anybody gloss over the news report of what I just said? U-R-A-N-U-S. Uranus smells like farts. I, it's just mind-boggling. They actually released that. And only conspiracy theorist stood up and said, What the fuck? Last week, NASA brought forth the first picture of a black hole, like I said a few moments ago. Only the conspiracy theorist stood up and said, What the F? If you've told us, scientists, for 50 years that a black hole is a massive gravity well that gobbles up all light and other components of the electromagnetic spectrum, how the hell did you get a picture of it? I mean, how many people around us today actually think Matthew McConaughey actually flew into a black hole. I'm not sure people can differentiate between movies and news anymore. Now, the news today collectively is just an agent for the Ministry of Information. There's only one group left who questions it, us. Be aware of the general script that is running on this realm. Whether this is the Matrix like the movie or something else, we all have variations in our agreement or disagreement. It's script the script laid down on all of us is predictable and getting more obvious and pathetic by the week. We now see the same tired old themes repeated over and over. When the United States wants to wage war, the script says an evil dictator is killing his own people. The next page of the comic book says he needs to be stopped. We have the same old themes on racism all the time and diversity and all the other politically correct crap. Over and over, We have the same made-up stories on women being treated unfairly. Sure, they're isolated incidents. Somebody's screaming at their computer right now. There's 300 million people in this country. There will be isolated incidents of people trying to place a cinder block up their ass. The news passes off these incidents as general themes. Like every single business and company in this country wants women out of their office and out of their cubicle and baking bread in the back room where employees steal unmarked lunches, you know, the room in the back where the coffee machine is in the microwave. They run these same themes over and over. They tell us that millions of blacks, millions of women and gays are being discriminated against. By whom? They don't say. But the default... Of course, we know who it is. It's white men, the beast of all beasts. They convince us that most women who will go to college will be sexually molested in some way within the first semester. That most cops are just dying to shoot young black men. The incidents of most of these are ridiculously low. But when a few things happen across a country with hundreds of millions of people, the news will paint the picture that the situation is out of control and is already in your backyard and something needs to be done. If you have a niece in college, you should drive there right now to protect her from men. Government then needs to step in and fix the problem with, of course, more laws, more regulation and another army of administrative regulators. Learn to read the matrix code yourself and identify the symptoms and manifestations of the control system earlier than your neighbor, who will never see them at all. This begins with understanding that the entire system is based on control through manipulation. The system pushes its crap on us every hour of every day in which we're awake. Your response should be the same to it as it would be to a drug dealer. The pusher man is always offering the same lures on this earthly hook. Materialism, sex, standing, fame, beauty, status, etc. Now these pendulums swing back and forth in front of you all day long, massaging your lower chakras to elicit jealousy, envy, lust, hate, 
fear, anger, dread, regret, anxiety, and much more. When the system is not trying to make you feel like shit, it's candy feeds your ego, never your spirit or soul. Never. When we see its tricks, we'll just simply do the opposite. Take all possible steps you can to remove the dominance of your ego in controlling your life. That is what this entire system is designed to feed. It's the American psycho, quite literally. The ego self is not your true self. There are other aspects of you called higher self. Discovering one's spirituality does not mean organized religion, sitting in million dollar churches, or relying on a plastic man like Joel Osteen, somebody that pops up as a middleman between you and God, tries to take a commission. Spirituality is a very broad term that can mean a hundred things to a hundred different people. One's willingness to see the earth as a living, breathing system is a form of spirituality. Spirituality to me is far, far away from creeps like Jim Baker and Joel Alstein or the massive infrastructure of the Catholic Church. In the case of a real drug dealer, think of the TV series Breaking Bad, we know what a pusher of meth gets out of selling his stuff. You buy his ice. He gets his money. He then buys guns and new spinning rims for $3,500. In the case of this system, it's much harder to understand what these monsters get out of it. What does the system win by having you buy each of the various drugs the system wants you to take every day? This is something we'll look at over many, many chapters to come. We know, though, the buffoons at the top, the buffoon clown show bozos at the top, like Barack Obama and Nancy Pelosi, are not in charge of anything. Whatever or whoever they report to, our approach should be the same. To win, we don't need to know exactly what or who is in any back room pulling strings and laying down the script and handing out everybody's cue cards that you're family, friends, and neighbors are just dying to snatch up and to deliver their lines. One wonders if there is a thing in the back room if it ever took George Bush on its lap like Santa Claus. Now, winning is you versus you. It's that simple. Winning is you versus you, not you versus them. It does everything in its power to think it's versus them. Go join a militia group and get them. That's exactly what it wants. They want us trying to figure it out and playing a giant game of Clue our entire lives. Who or what is doing it to us? We must find out. Okay, let's be rational and reasonable about this. We know Dick Cheney was George Bush's handler, so who did Dick Cheney take his orders from then? Who does Jared Kushner really serve crimpets to? They want us to spend all our time on this sort of Easter egg hunt. At this point, we know. We'll never figure it out. We'll never really know. No Toto's going to come up behind us and run over to the curtain and pull that green thing back. We don't need to know. But we've heard in school, know thy enemy. Well, yes and no. We don't need to know its name and address. Know thy enemy, yes. We simply must recognize the enemy's goals. What does it want from us? There's likely no terminus or final back room. It may be altogether something we can never recognize or understand the way this reality generation machine generates, you know, all that is represented by the back of the dollar bill, for example. We know it wants us looking for it, though. It seems to be the very nature of this reality construct that we're never able to find a boss level. Think how easy it would be for a video game developer to make a game for, say, Xbox that's a never-ending maze. And I mean never ending. No matter how many years you play the game on Xbox, it will always generate another turn or another door. Or how easy it would be to program another layer of Donkey Kong just when you think you got it beat. But we don't see a problem with that, do we? The video game example makes perfect sense. It's easy to comprehend. That would be really easy for any video game designer to do. Well, why can't this reality be designed in the exact same way? Just because it's more complicated and above our monkey-level understanding? 
What? That doesn't fit into what you know about how the universe works? How the hell do you know how the universe works? Does the Sim character in the maze understand how his world works? A real Sim in a video game? Does a fish in a fish tank know how his universe works? And how it relates to the living room and the lake just outside the living room? Why are we arrogant enough to think we are any different from a Sim character in a video game? Or even a fish in a fish tank? Okay, ours is a bit more sophisticated, but in the grand scheme of things, so what? If we learn not to give the system energy or attention, it starves out. Whatever person, entity, or creature is behind it, real or artificial, it starves out. In War Games, the movie, that Joshua thing in the Whopper computer didn't spring to life before that little punk Matthew Broderick wanted to play a game. It was always dormant. He went and sought it out. He went wandering through the Garden of Eden. The human being brought a dormant monster to life like Joshua by seeking out a game, and a violent one at that. He didn't seek out, uh, you know, uh, chess. He wanted to play global thermonuclear war, a dangerous game. The more dangerous game, the more ruthless the monster that pops up, potentially, like Joshua. A truth drop in another movie? Yeah, probably, perhaps. It's we, not the Satan character, who probably empowers every demon in this realm, or whatever you call a demon. Perhaps just like Joshua, it's now this demonic control system, it's now beyond control, and we ourselves have locked out changes, just like in the movie. Remember, uh, no missiles are actually in the air, so let's let's, uh, go back to DEFCON 5. Uh, We can't do anything, sir. We push that red button. Changes have been locked out. So Joshua's trying to find the code to launch the missiles. You know, it's like this system's out of control now. We created it, and we've locked out changes. That's a good metaphor, in my opinion. So what do we do? The answer from the movie is simple. We force Donald Trump to play tic-tac-toe against Vladimir Putin, locked in a room with no food and water, and one toilet. Actually, that's pointless, because it's one world system, not two people at odds with each other. Matthew Broderick sitting in his smelly room with his shirt off, perhaps just another metaphor for the bite of the apple and the fall of man. The goal of the truther, to get the people around us to see that getting emotionally involved in the system is as pointless as playing tic-tac-toe against a computer. But what will we have just today? We'll have hundreds of thousands of tweets and Facebook posts uh, calling Trump the orange man, putting their energy against Trump, and then you have others digging in to support Trump, and uh, those that dig in, you just want to ask them, what, what has he done? What's, what's happened? in the Nothing's changed in the last 30 years. So, and for some reason, they have this list of things he's done, and there's nothing we can see. And then there's the Trump haters, and then there, there's some women's march somewhere uh, today. Uh, you know, somewhere some people are getting together to do a women's march, and I'm sure Black Lives Matter is all fired up today somewhere. And oh, let's be let's be balanced. The KKK is meeting somewhere today. We need to be balanced. You know, all you know. Dig, I, I talk about camps coming up in the next. All the different camps the system loves to put us in, and it's fascinating. And it's, it's, it's so simple. If everybody would just take their white hood and put it in the trash and walk away from all the camps and never ever get, leave another Facebook post about the orange-haired man and just walk away, we'd all be winners. And is that another truth drop from Mad Max, the road warrior, the humongous? Just walk away. Just walk away and I'll spare your lives. There's been too much death in the wasteland. Just walk away. Just walk away. There's another truth drop. Let's give a round of applause to the humongous. The humongous from Mad Max, the road warrior. That was for the road warrior people. I hated those those uh, bastards in their little white uniforms, uh, you know, trying to make the gasoline. I wanted those people to die, and I was actually rooting for the humongous gang. So if we, the collective conscious, are likely the engine of the George Bush creature egregores, egregores, that's something 
we'll talk about later if I can if the person that came up with the concept can ever explain it in a way that I can understand a thought form talk about it later but if we the collective consciousness created these creatures well then we can easily kill it off if we stop paying attention the final solution is easy and we don't need to perform the easter egg hunt to win just stop looking we don't need the easter eggs it's like this one day, you and your neighbors see drugs are being pushed all over your little town. If you can just make sure nobody buys any of the drugs, the dealers will soon leave town and all the drugs will leave. Now, if you need to know exactly who's behind it all, where the drugs are coming from, what mob connections are involved, and what trucking company is used to bring the drugs in, then you're going to be wasting a lot of time and doing a lot of shit that you don't need to do. Are you and your neighbors going to go after Don Corleone in New York directly if you actually find out Michael or Vito are responsible for the drugs in your little town? You're not going to do anything anyway. You just want him out. Why do you even have to engage the boss level? Simply don't provide a market for the drugs and you win. In a few weeks, they go away. Our predicament right now is somewhat dire. Only a small percentage of us realizes our situation and can read the script. About 300 million Americans are lining up to take more drugs. If that massive group only knew what life could be like if they simply worked together to starve the parasite, and how easy that would be if people simply worked together. What action is needed? That's the beauty of it. No action. You don't have to do anything. Simply walk away. That would be easy, but everybody's already an addict.